WBGFM, locals talking to locals. Time to say good morning to James Coots, Otaki Ward Councillor. I've got him on the telephone line now. Good morning, James. <laughs> good morning. It seems like we haven't talked all year. Well, we haven't. <laughs> this is the first time this year. Here it is February already, <laughs> isn't it? Amazing. It is. Never mind. Your um, community board got together last week, they were telling me. Is that right? Uh, no, not for a, or oh, not might be for the a official meeting. Oh, right. No, no, no. Just as a sort of a group gathering, was it? To have a little chat oh, about yeah, things we, coming up? Little group gatherings from time to time. It's always good to strategize and chat, um, chat about things. And uh, I think it's the strength of the, the Otaki Community Board, not um, criticizing any of the others, um, current or past, but um, certainly the board, the boards um, over the years have functioned well together as a unit. And, uh, yeah, I mean, anyone knows that if a team works well together and they all push in the same direction, you can achieve a lot more. Mm. So um, it's certainly been a strength of the all tacky board in the time that I've um, sat around the table in different capacities. Of course, you've got a fair bit on your plate this year, no more than the expressway, of course. It's developing quickly, and uh, no doubt there'll be one or two issues raised with the board about that. Yeah, so look, the, the next couple of years is really critical for Otaki in a number of different ways. I mean, obviously the expressway, um, we have uh, a number of opportunities and challenges to face the uh, um, and already, um, you know, issues arise. Um, some Clearly some concerns coming out of Te Hora over the um, possibility of noise from the expressway. Um, so, I mean, it's uh, the next two years, is, uh, if there's ever a time that the community board needs to perform and um, to represent its community, now's the time. And certainly, um, I mean, that's what we are you know, trying to do our best at. The NZTA are keeping the community in the loop, though, pretty much, aren't they? They come along to your board meetings and have uh, open meetings, etc. Yeah, look, I think um, two things, really. You've got um, NZTA and then you've got Fletch as Fletchers. the team that are actually doing the work. And I, I think it's um, important to differentiate because at the end of the day, Fletchers are, um, you know, literally a contractor or employee who are just doing a job. Um, and so I had them on about something the other day and said, look, I appreciate you guys are just doing as you're told, you're just doing the job. Um, and the reason why I mention that is if, um, it's important if you're going to chew someone's ear, you're chewing the right ear. And, um, and then in this instance, it was um, NZTA that, um, you know, ultimately responsible. Um, they basically um, give the approval and then Fletcher's just go and, um, and do it. Um, and that's, a, a, you know, I guess a really good example with the Te Hauro section um, through there. Um, that ultimately lies with um, NZTA and um, certainly, um, you know, we've been having some discussions um, just around the approach um, to that, that particular issue. So, that, I mean, there'll be minor issues that come up um, and there'll be, you know, some probably some more major ones as we move along and I think the important thing is that we've got good dialogue and um, we're trying to work together. I've never really found that we achieve anything um, in the years gone by um, attacking people or um, getting offside with people if you're you know, whether it be NZTA or KCDC or uh, Beachy FM, if you want their assistance, it's, you know, it's, it's best that you try and work amicably together. And it looks like the Otaki to uh, Levin is going to go ahead. There was some doubt about that, but they're starting to really get fired up and uh, it doesn't affect you too much, does it? Because this uh, yeah, road we've got goes through to Taylor's Road. After that, what happens? Yeah, look, I'm not too sure about your comment there that it looks like it's going ahead. My understanding is, um, and I think the government's good in doing this. They're trying to give certainty. So what they're doing is they're going ahead with choosing a preferred route. Now they may, um, they, I no doubt they will do that, and they will come out and say this is our preferred route, um, which gives certainty to people who are either looking at buying in the area or currently living on that route and, look, and trying to decide, you know, well, do we bugger off and go somewhere else? Mm. Um, so, I, yeah, take my head off to them for that. I think um, it would have been foolish or, or just un, um, unfortunate for property owners if they didn't do that. Uh, but what they, what my understanding is they haven't been um, clear about, and for, for valid reason, um, is whether they'll actually construct the expressway once they choose the preferred route. Um, and that will come down to a whole number of factors. I mean, I imagine the Transport Minister's got a, um, a, a multitude of projects all around the car, country screaming out, um, you know, that they're the most important contract in the um, in the country to be done. Um, and he'll have to sit down with um, his staff from NZTA and they'll go through and they'll no doubt have um, um, a weighting measure that they use to... Um, 
judge, you know, which projects, you know, rank higher. And Ōtake will, you know, Ōtake to um, north of Levin will just be one of those projects. Um, so my understanding is they're proceeding with the um, consultation to decide the preferred route, but they haven't actually committed to building it. Um, right. But you, yeah, you might have heard otherwise. Yeah, no, that's right. They sent out 14,000 letters to give the postman a job over the next wee while, all those who are going to be affected <laughs> up there. And uh, there's got meetings over the next two weeks at various points from uh, Waitareere right down to Madakao. Yeah, so interesting. I mean, it does affect a handful of people within our um, area, and that's something that I've had to constantly remind myself. I mean, it's, it's busy enough as it is in this job, um, let alone to try and take on other work that's not, you know, really relevant to us. But the um, but that is, um, whether we like it or not, there's a, a small stretch of road that is in the um, Kapiti Coast District Council um, district. Um, so we have as much of a responsibility to those people as we do to people at Pika Pika. Right. OK, and uh, you're still having your meetings with the business people just to keep them in the loop as well, are you? So um, the Autaki Promotions Group do a business meeting. Um, they shared one last night and I was unable to make that one. I think it's the first one I haven't been to for a while. Um, but then I, I think it may be you're referring to the Elevate Autaki Yes, that's group. right. Mm. Um, yeah, so I mean that group um, starts up again in a couple of weeks. Uh, one of the things that I'll be raising with the group, and it's just an observation that I've had from other groups that function within the district and different um, topics is around how do we communicate what we're doing um, because we, you know we go along um, and, and everyone else on the group are volunteers um, yeah, I mean I'm paid as an elected member but we go along and uh, with all good intentions and we talk about changing the world and we're going to do this and do that but and we think we're doing a great job but um, often that's not communicated to people you know and how do we do that and you can release you know sort of boring minutes but I mean generally minutes are just a, a record of decisions that are made it's not you know verbatim sort of word for word um, so that's just something as chair of that group that I'm just thinking um, you know how do we communicate that to interested parties within the community um, and certainly you know media shop owners and so forth so Remembering that Elevate Autaki isn't just about shop owners. Uh, I think it's important to note that it's, we're not there just to serve business owners. This is about the future of Autaki. Um, but with that, um, retailers are important. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that because I am one, um, but at the end of the day, if you don't have businesses, you don't have employment. You don't have employment, you don't have um, that money that goes around. So, you know, any good community functions on a good economic base. And, um, and that's something that we, uh, you know, that's what we're trying to achieve. Great. Um, so that Autaki can prosper moving forward. And the railway station, have you decided what you're going to do with that? Who uh, is operating that? Is it a business or Yeah, not? so look, we've got um, I think what has happened is the because of the earthquake prone status of the building or the heritage slash earthquake um, uh, the Office of Treaty Settlements has taken that back, back in under their control. It used to be under the responsibility of KCDC so it has actually, I'll be blunt with you, it's been flipping frustrating um, and it's, you know, again it comes back to that, that bureaucracy and as much as people complain to me about the bureaucracy of KCBC which I know is there at times it's, it's, it's there in central government it's there in you know, sometimes NZTA and, and all the other departments, it's, it's sort of the thing that frustrates me the most I guess sometimes being a business owner where you just decide you want to do something and you do it uh, You know, sometimes you wait weeks or months just to get to sign off on something so look they have taken that back under their responsibility I'm trying to get the fl- flipping thing clean because it's a disgrace and, um, and our staff can't even get decent responses out of um, the two organisations that are involved here. You've got Kiwi Rail and you've got um, Office of Treaty Settlement. So, yeah, we have very little say on that at the moment. And as I said, even our staff at KCDC are not getting much um, joy out of um, either organisation to step up and actually um, take responsibility for an asset that they have um, that is just covered in graffiti and needs a damn good wash. Mm. Well, on a lighter side, just to finish off with, you'll be going to the races this afternoon at uh, the Harness Racing Meeting to make some money and the Kite Festival. You'll be flying <laughs> your kite there next week, won't you? Uh, look, I, my dad loves the races. I, I can even recite his TAB number as kids. We heard it that often when you'd ring up and place <laughs> the bet. And I, I, I just not even interested myself. I'm not anti racing. I just it just doesn't um, doesn't interest me. But I think um, it's great for the community. I think the uh, Autoki Māori Racing Club is a 
huge asset for Otaki, and obviously you'll be aware of, you know, some of the things that they're trying to do moving forward, which I think is great. Um, and obviously we've got the Kite Festival coming up, so yes. hopefully um, the lovely weather that we've been um, having holds out for that. We have a great weekend. Good on you. Well, you'll have the, the whole town's booked out anyhow for the trotting with the owners and that. The biggest uh, number of owners and trainers coming along to this meeting, so for two days the town is packed. So good on you, yeah, James. So that, look, that's good to hear. I just hope the weather holds out. I mean, the, the clubs had just a terrible run with um, cancellations. It's totally outside of their control, and I, I feel for them. It's, um, I, I know that um, tracks all around the country are struggling um, for a number of reasons, and that being one of them. Thanks, James. Have a good time, and we'll talk to you in a fortnight's time. Hey, thanks very much for the call. James Coates, Ward Councillor for Otaki there. 106.3 BGFM.